the overriding feeling every off-season optimism. Every team is oh, oh oh. It's a clean slate and an opportunity to get better. The past is the past and the only thing to do is move forward. Everyone has a chance. This is something first-year coaches preach a lot, then the regular season starts and reality hits, sometimes, that reality is a sobering reminder of what lies ahead. Other times it's euphoric. For others still, it's a perpetuated sense of uncertainty of what to conclude. The first week of the 2017 college football ISNT entirely over, but every first-year FBS coach has completed at least their first game. How did each of them grade out? We graded each debut or two game debut in some cases based on not only the final score, but how the game played out. Tom Herman, Texas Longhorns D. Herman lost his first game in Austin to a double-digit underdog in Maryland Terrapins, by double digits. However, the Terps might be better than initially thought. But that doesn't take away the sting of the loss. Texas still makes a lot of the same mistakes as the one that finished 57 a year ago. On top of that, Herman took a few risks on fourth down calls that weren't well executed. He obviously deserves time to do what he needs to do, but for the Horns to show practically no improvement against a good but certainly not great team is a bad debut. Lincoln Riley, Oklahoma Sooners A. We weren't going to learn a whole lot about the Sooners in a 567 win over Texas El Paso Miners. Still, there's not much to complain about when quarterback Baker Mayfield goes 19 of 20 for 329 yards and three touchdowns, and is sitting by halftime. Is the defense ready for a challenge at Ohio State Buckeyes in Week 2? Well, find out. For now, Riley's debut was uneventful, which is just how he should want it. P.J. Fleck, Minnesota Golden Gopher C.A. win is a win. Beating Buffalo Bulls 177 counts the same as beating them 717. There was a big passing touchdown in the first quarter, thanks to receiver Tyler Johnson. Overall, though, their WASNT much that stood out about this win. On to the next one, Willie Taggart, Oregon Ducks B Southern Utah WASNT going to pose much of a threat, and though the Ducks gave up some points and had the ball moved on them in a 7,721 win, it's not enough to get too worked up over for now. Like a lot of teams facing lesser opponents, take the lopsided W and move on. Jeff Brom, Purdue Boilermakers be giving Louisville Cardinals a run for its money certainly warrants at least an above-average rating. The Boilermakers led at two different points in the game and up until about nine minutes left in the fourth quarter. It was far from a clean game, though by both sides. Still, it's a promising start for the Brom era, Matt Rule, Baylor Bears F. There will probably be better days ahead for Rule. He has a seven-year deal and deserves all the time in the world to get this program turned around on and off the field. His tenure will not be defined by one game and it probably won't be defined by his first year, or maybe even his second. The Bears are painfully young and thin on the depth chart, especially on defense. That's going to be trouble as Big 12 play picks up. But allowing AFCS Team Liberty to rack up nearly 600 yards of offense in a 4,845 loss doesn't bode well for the rest of the season. Yeesh, Charlie Strong, South Florida Bulls D. Strong doesn't merit an F because his team HASNT lost, but he HASNT earned anything higher than 80 after struggling to pull away from Stony Brook of the FCS. Keep in mind, too, that the Bulls had an all-time disastrous first quarter in Week 0 on the road at San Jose State Spartans. That could sort of be explained away, seeing as it was the first game of the year and it was a cross-country road trip. However, Strong better hope these slow starts don't turn into a theme. Mike Sanford, Western Kentucky v. The Hilltoppers showed once and for all which direction of the Commonwealth was best by beating Eastern Kentucky 3,117. Have to throw out the record books when these two get together. Lane Kiffin, Florida, Atlantic Owls D. There was some late line movement in favor of FAO, but losing to Navy Midshipmen 4,219 WASNT all that surprising. There were some positives, the Owls did have a 95-yard score and kept the game close for a half. Meanwhile, multiple weather delays meant it took more than three hours to play the fourth quarter. All anyone wanted to do was go home. Everyone except Kiffin, that is. Look, I get it. Play till the end and never give up and all that. But, maybe give up Randy Edsel, you can see Holy Cross has what appears to be a legitimate player at quarterback in Peter Pujols. That won't make the Edsel and the Huskies feel any better about allowing Pujols to throw for 358 yards. 
UConn survived the Crusaders 2720 and that might be an ominous sign for the rest of the season, at Orgeron, LSU Tigers say anytime you hold your opponent to under 100 yards of offense and keep them on their side of the 54 all 60 minutes, as LSU did to Brigham Young Cougars in a 270 shutout, you get an A and a cookie Matt Luke, Ole Miss Rebels say South Alabama Jaguars gave the Rebels a bit of a first half scare, but Ole Miss was able to weather the storm not unlike what they'll have to do this season behind quarterback Shea Patterson four touchdown passes in a 4,727 win. Unlike a lot of other coaches, Luke's efforts this year will be graded on curve given all the NCAA distractions happening around the program. To get a win in Week 1, against any opponent, has to be a welcome relief. Tom Allen, Indiana Hoosiers be the final score of 4,921 dose and do Indiana's loss to Ohio State Justice. The Hoosiers came ready to play. They had the right defensive plan and their wide receivers made incredible catches all night. Like so many games against Ohio State in the past, however, the toll of the game took over about midway through the third quarter and the Buckeyes pulled away. It was a bad sign when the Hoosiers did just about everything right in the first half but could only manage a one-point halftime lead. Not much Allen can do about that, Jeff Collins, Temple I'll see at least Notre Dame fighting Irish looks competent again that's about the only thing keeping this above a failing grade. The Owls had some rebuilding to do and playing an athletically superior team ISNT the best way to get started. The best thing Temple did all day intercepting a Brandon Wimbush pass and returning it to the Notre Dame 14-yard line ended. In a 36-yard missed field goal, Luke Fickle, Cincinnati Bearcats be needing the second half to put away Austin Pay the same Austin Pay that has won exactly one game in the previous four seasons 2614 ISNT exactly a strong start for Fickle, which Davis, Florida International Golden Panthers D Central Florida Gators looks pretty darn good. With the way South Florida stumbled through the first two weeks, maybe it's the Knights who are the team to beat in the ASC East. FIU WASNT going to win this game and that's not really Davis' fault. Still, there aren't many positives in losing 6,117. Justin Wilcox, Calais, North Carolina Tar Heels may be taking a step back but going cross-country and getting a 3,530 win on the road in your first game is impressive. Plus, the Golden Bears' defense already looks at least a little bit better than it did a year ago not that that's saying too much. Considering where Cal was when Wilcox took over, this among the best opening week wins of any first-year coach in the FBS this season, Tim Lester, Western Michigan Broncos say short of actually, you know, beating Southern California Trojans, I'm not sure how you can grade Lester's first game much differently. The Broncos never, ever went away and they out the Trojans on multiple occasions. Only when USC turned on the Jets at the absolute end was the 4,931 game decided. Coach P.J. Fleck may be gone along with Corey Davis, but this team still has dudes, Jeff Tedford, Fresno State, Bulldogs a shutting out incarnate word 660 is a hell of a way for Tedford to get back into the college game, Brent Brennan, San Jose State B. We have to average Brennan's first two games here, but the early returns are promising. Getting a 3,413 win over Cal Poly was needed, and a 4,222 loss to South Florida was a game that simply got away from the Spartans. San Jose State had a perfect first quarter against the Bulls in Week 0, they just did and have the players to sustain it. This is a rebuilding job and Brennan has shown this program has a little bit of life in it. Jay Norville, Nevada Wolfpack see the Wolfpack lost to Northwestern Wildcats 3,120, but led at halftime. Not great, obviously, but not bad, either. It's perfectly neutral, Sean Elliott, Georgia State Panthers F. How else would you describe losing at home to Tennessee State 17-10 Turner Field as cursed? It has to be.